So I wanted to put some of my thoughts down on video. And I've been thinking about, um, you know, my purpose, like why I have a passion for this career field. Well, and it comes back to helping people. You know, it's not for, and I mentioned this to a lot of my clients that, you know, it's not about the dogs. It's really about the people. I've noticed that a lot of us in our society have adapted to dogs. And because we went through it, especially fairly recently, because we went through a tough time. We went through this hole of depression and by ourselves. And so a lot of people got dogs and saw the value in a dog as a companion. But we missed the component that they are predators and they're not stuffed animals like something like this and so you have to be balanced in your approach you know I tell my clients it's like being a mom and a dad no matter what your sex is you have to love your dog but you also have to make your dog do things you have to make your dog earn that affection and they're so willing to work for you and, and that's like probably initially how it started right has I mean I know dogs are working dogs just generational processes we've domesticated them we've made them cute and a dog that we can bring everywhere you know it doesn't have to do these these jobs for us but it does need a job and that's what my curriculum does is it gives the dogs a job it gives them purpose but it also gives us that leadership and that confidence to tell these things what to do so they're not confused in this chaotic life right it's like man their majority of their life is at home they're relaxed it's calm and then maybe somebody comes over or they see the amazon guy or the doorbell rings or they see a squirrel and then it's just like a spike of energy and they can't manage that that stimulation that draw so now through training we're able to slow them down at their home that's my first week of practice is mastering the house maybe the the property and then as and that's through people coming over doorbells ringing any of those triggers seeing a squirrel outside um and they just relax in that situation and I, I have place I put them on their dog bed making sure they can sit in the environment work themselves out through that stress when people come over and then we transfer that nice calm energy to outside where it's like chaotic but we have a good foundation of focus and eye contact and it's a beautiful process but going back to the humanity side is it just gives us the ability to take back our lives and not adapt to the dogs the dogs are adapting to our lifestyle if that's if we leave for work if that's if we don't want to take them on a walk if we have people over it's like it's so random for them right they don't have a prefrontal cortex so they can't conceptualize for it. they don't know that somebody's coming over um so it just helps helps them in those unpredictable situations and man I just see it throughout my clients and it's so fast such a quick quick process um, for you to to do it and to be doing it in group class with 20 plus people now and 20 plus dogs and the dogs are just focused on their person that's my mindset is none of these things matter Mom, dad, brother, the people in your lives, the leaders, those are the th people that matter. So when you're in public places, your dog doesn't need to greet that dog. Your dog doesn't need to look at that dog or that, that distraction, whatever it may be. Um, but they need to look at you and they need to follow you and understand that you are the value. That you love them, but you also are going to put them in check and make sure they're doing the right things and that's what they want they want to balance just like our kids I have three daughters so I tell a lot of my clients again that I was a better dad after I was a dog trainer 
because I was balanced in my approach. I wasn't frustrated. I, I mean, I don't get as frustrated. Um, and if I do, it's not, I don't yell out of frustration. I yell to help manage a situation. If my kids are arguing with each other and it gets to a point where they can't get out of it, I'll step in. Um, if they want to debate with me, we'll go to, I'll let them, you know, they're old enough to have a conversation, but when they can't give up, I'll just stop it. You know, there has to be a, a point where we have to shut it off for our kids. But anyways, back to dog training, uh, super effective. I like to also mention that I want to take away the dog's freedom throughout a training program to gradually give it back to them. You know, I feel like we give so much to our dogs. So why do we we not do it to our kids? We put them in cribs and play pens and all those things to make sure that they're safe. A kennel is a safe spot. Place, their um, dog bed, or I like a place cot, is confining them to that object. Uh, and then you start to give it to them, right? They earn that freedom. They're making the right choices. They're not reacting to situations, not peeing or pooping in the house. It's like, okay, we keep giving them. The my dogs sleep with me, all right? My dogs can go on couches, but they didn't do that initially. They started at the bottom, and I let them earn those things. Now, do they sleep with me every night? No. I make that random, too. I Are they in a kennel? Sometimes they are. Sometimes they're not. When I'm at work, they're in a kennel. But they're, it's so random, and they just trust me, and they'll do whatever I tell them. That's what I want for my clients. For your dog to trust you, and you to 100% trust them, and let's go. Five-star dog training. I'm Chase. Thanks, guys.